everybody, it is Cinnamon Cooney, your archer friend. Today I'm going to show you how to paint this gorgeous landscape where you're looking through a window and it's just rained and you're seeing a snow scene and there's road and cabin. And it's really kind of all the things that I needed to like unpack from uh, 2021 going into 2022. It's our first painting in the new year. John, how are you doing today? Good. So to help me do all this mayhem that we've got going on today is my fabulous husband, John. He's going to make sure that everything is pointing where it goes and all the technology works. Um, we've had a lot of interesting stuff going on in the chat. Oh, hi, Patty. Um, I see Rebecca and so many of our art fam coming back. I want to welcome Sylvia Bohr back to uh, Emoji Chat. Mm. So good to have you if you want your weird emojis. That's where that is. Um, but, you know, YouTube provides free emojis. Oh, and guess what? Mandy Dolph is an emoji member for 12 months. I know we've got our family over on Facebook. Did we get to Facebook today? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I, was like, I feel like we did. Now, um, this lesson, uh, I'm going to drill down super deep. It's going to be like really invested. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at uh, the questions. If we're not answering, uh, you know, definitely put up your questions. Put them in all caps. Um, we'll try, the mods will try to get you to the videos or answers or everything that you need during the live show. And then at the end, um, I may pull out a couple that like as you guys watch the video, sometimes you guys think of a question that I didn't think to answer. And we may do that at the, at the end of the video. Um, you know, to make sure that everything is answered. And then if somehow you're here on the replay or something's happened and I haven't answered your question, guess what? Done? What's up? Um, you put it in the comments and I'm going to look for that and try to answer that. Um, uh, Sienna Hell's back. Love you guys so much. Sending love from Southern Illinois. And Anne saying I look pretty today. I got my unicorn on and some new makeup. I see Mike Cook and like everybody came back. I'm so glad everybody came back. I was really worried after taking a break if everybody would come back. But John, they came back. They're back. They're back. Now, listen, I want to kind of wish your intention out there in the universe. You can add it to your canvas or um, just hold it in your heart that everybody is healthy and okay. There were so many comments online in my community and here in the chat ahead of time about, you know, people having health scares, uh, you know, especially around all the stuff that's going on right now. And um, I just want everybody to be okay and safe. So let's just put that wish out there that, that we're all okay and safe and doing all right because, man, that's how we get to paint together. Mm -hmm. Now, there are some materials listed in the description below, and I have a new code explaining how I'm describing brushes, and I'm doing it this way, so no matter where you live and no matter what you've got going on, you can understand what brush I'm talking about, and you don't have to worry about a brand. You understand what the brush is and how big it should be. Um, definitely give me feedback on that. Uh, we'll be breaking down the materials per step, and of course, as for always, we'll have a mini book out seven to ten days after the show. Traceable's up. But I'm going to demonstrate the drawing. Now, you can do this. Yeah. I absolutely know you can do it. I have broken this lesson down. I've gone deep. You're going to come away going, I can add raindrops to everything. You stick this in a frame, you put it on your wall, it's going to look like you're looking out a window. You're going to be so proud of yourself. And you are going to want to add raindrops to all your paintings. Uh, I feel like I've come up with a new way that we haven't really seen before uh, to do it that's maybe more beginner friendly. I hope so. Fingers crossed. Mm -hmm. um, I certainly did this a couple of times. And Kim Zook says, I told you we love our art teacher. Thank you. And then D's like freezing rain warning on the snowy scene. How unique. Hello, everyone. I'm looking forward to this lesson. Yes, freezing rain. But I mean, that's a weird moment in the weather, right? So, yay, Lisa, welcome. All right. So, you guys ready? Mm -hmm. Got your brushes, get your canvases, you saw the materials. You can go and review those in the description below and on our website. So, I'll have that again. Moderators will make sure you have access to everything. Let's get our creative on for the new year. Let's do it. All right, guys, so this is the beginning of this art journey. And what we're going to be doing is painting this entire 9 by 12 surface a solid color. The mix is going to be very simple. I am going to walk you through it. You don't have to be that careful or particular here because it's what's called a colored ground or toning the canvas. So it's very, very relaxed and not a lot of pressure. That said, remember that your acrylic can darken as it dries. That's called color shift. So you might want to try to aim for a slightly lighter color than you're initially thinking. Let's get our brush and get started with that. 
Dawn's going to make me nice and small. So the brush for this is a nice, wide, bright. I have it on a short handle, but you could have a long handle. It's synthetic for acrylic. I'm going to dip the brush in water, drag off the extra. I'm going to take a little bit of my ultramarine blue and my titanium white here. So I've got ultramarine blue, titanium white. I'm going to mix them together, and I'm going to cover the whole background of the canvas this little light blue color. It's kind of like that winter sky blue. It can be streaky. It can be messy. The brush strokes can go different directions. You can paint this color around the edge of the canvas at this stage if that's what you want to do. If you've had a rough week, you can just take it right out on the canvas right now. <laughs> if you're like, ah, I'm going to, I'm going to aggressively paint this. Just get it, get it in, get it in there, right? So this is going to do so many good things for you, right? You know, it's going to help your canvas take the paint better as we paint. It's going to make sure that if you've got a little dry brushing going on, it's not white canvas showing underneath where we don't want that. You know, and it's going to get you warmed up into the idea of mixing colors and just putting paint on the canvas. Now I'm here with you. You're not alone. You're good. And I will be here the whole time making sure you've got this. And you do. You have it. Everybody is here to chat with us. Are they here today? They are here today. And actually, because of the magic of time travel, you may be here tomorrow. <laughs> or yesterday. Or yesterday. <laughs> Oh my goodness, now look at that. I kind of went through that pretty quickly. And sometimes I do like to go through and kind of, you know, order this out a little bit. It's just a light blue, right? It's just ultramarine and titanium white, light blue. But, all right, I'm going to tell you something else you need to know. You're going to want this to be completely dry before you go on. In acrylic painting, Knowing when it needs to be dry is as important as knowing when two colors of paint need to be wet for wet and to wet work. So this is when we're going to dry it. I'm going to use my hair dryer. Um, I'm not going to make you sit through the whole hair drying process, but you dry at home. Remember, your drying time may be different than mine. So pause the video, dry yours, and meet me back on the next step where I'm going to show you how much fun putting in a sky background is with Pantone's Color of the Year, Perry. So here we are on the next step where we're going to be laying in the sky. We're going to be making this year's color of the year. Pantone picks a color that they think embodies the year. So we're going to be using Perry at the bottom of the sky and kind of blending up into a winter aqua. I'm going to show you how to do those color mixes and explain it very specifically. John's going to make sure that everything is pointing where you need to see it. Right. If you have any questions, definitely, definitely, we're here to help. So be sure and ask. I am going to be using some soft mops uh these are one inch mops and they're synthetic and i like them because they don't hold so much water lots of different companies have these brand like this type of brush like this is a princeton this is a ruby satin by silver they're all fine they're out there and they're a really good thing to have in. and some people like to use makeup brushes mm -hmm. which can be okay if you have a really good brush for that so these are all possible kind of mentally block your surface in half let's get down into the blendy blendy color mix all right, so put out quinacridone magenta to my ultramarine blue, my phthalo blue, my cad yellow medium, and titanium white. So these are the basis for the sky. I'm going to pick one brush to begin with, and I'm going to get it lightly white, wet, not white, wet. And I'm going to take this off, right? So it's damp. Fill it with your hand. It's damp, All right? So that's what you're going for. Damp, not soaked. I'm going to come into here even where I already had the blue and white because I want a light color. If I'm going to add any water to this mix, I'm going to just barely dip the corner of my brush in because less is more. Let's get the pink in here. This is right how you get into this color. It's just ultramarine blue and uh, quinacridone magenta. And then you just want to take it into, you know, on this course I'm going to go a little more magenta to start and then I'll move over into the blue okay okay so you kind of see that I'm working this into the brush and then from here at the bottom I am lightly 
brushing up, all my brush strokes have a bit of a curve to them, and that is because it gives me some kind of windy feeling, mm -hmm. which I do like. If I want a little more magenta into that, I can get it, and a little more blue, so you can deepen anytime you want. I like to take it down a little bit because um, it lets me blend my hills up into the sky more naturally. If I need more water, I'm going to get my brush wet, but I'm not going to let it get soaked. I don't want it to be soaked. Blend this up here. And you can see this is just quite soft, right? Mm -hmm. Let's get a little more magenta into that brush. So we're running that range of the magenta, the ultramarine, and the titanium white. And if ever I want to get a little more white on there and work the corner of my brush, that's pretty easy to do. It's a weird way to kind of get some clouds in. But on a winter day, clouds can be misty and far away, and this day is a little bit rainy, it's a little bit snowy, it's kind of that blustery weather. Back when we had blustery weather in winter. <laughs> You can see I'm just lightly, look, I'm just lightly dusting. And John's going to come in on a nice angle there so you can really see that dusting. Now, before I switch colors, I really want this to be clean. Two ways to do that. I can really rinse out the brush and dry it out, or I can even do a thing if I have two of the brushes around, which I do, I can change brushes. Either is fine. I'm going to go ahead and get this wet again like we were doing before. And this time I'm going to get into my phthalo blue and a little bit of my cad yellow. Thank you, Jack. I'm going to make a turquoise. Am I Thank turquoise you, Leslie. There? And when I add a little white to it, sorry, takes it into that little weird winter turquoise. Thank you, guys. And this is still wet here, so I can blend these two skies together. Look at that go. Look at her go. She's blending those skies. Now, okay, I'm Take sure that everyone, down in. I'm mm -hmm. sure everyone's going to ask, mm. what color is that lipstick? Oh, uh, this is um, the one on me right now. The one you, They just saw the pink one there, so everyone's going to oh, ask what that, that is. Oh, this one, the pink lipstick here? I just or there. the one I'm wearing? Well, let's tell them both. Okay, this is, this is Grogu, the one I'm wearing. <laughs> I just saw the little yes, pink thing, like, and they're going to be like, And the that? other one is uh, Filthy Rich. <laughs> <laughs> which I'm not, but that's what they call the lipstick. I'm also not Grogu, but I wear it with pride, so. I don't know what that is, but cool. Now, the trick here is, guys, and if you're really new, this is where it is sort of the struggle with acrylic, is if you want that soft transition between these two sky colors, you've really got to have both areas of the purple of this, like, sort of periwinkle and the aqua be wet. Aqua be wet. Aqua be wet. And sometimes I can come in, look at this, this little, I get a little more white in there. And I can kind of loosely talk about a bit of a winter wispy cloud formation, can't I? With clouds, sometimes less is more because we want to think of them as little white cotton balls. But they're not always that, are they? Hmm. I'm just going like this. What a good beginning of the year. Just start with a yeah. Beautiful winterscape, little landscape. Get back into those little landscaping mindsets. It's a good use of aqua. Good use of aqua always. Then come in here and make sure I've got a nice little bit of white on this too, but it's got the pink in it. Blending those through. Sometimes aqua is used for... You can see I'd like coming a little bit timid, you know, sometimes with it a... Uh, I pull through and I try to leave lots of open spaces, lots of spaces for my mind's eye to have little moments. Whenever I rinse these out, I do have a towel nearby in my lap, which is what I'm doing right now, to dry them off. You can also come through with the brush damp if everything is bound, in other words, settled and set into the canvas. And you can even make adjustments there. If your paint is lifting at this stage, What's happened is it hasn't fully cured or dried, and you're not giving it enough enough time to do its thing. So should you stop and dry it at that point? I would highly recommend that you stop and dry it. 
Okay, so if you see it lifting, stop and dry. Yeah, you see it lifting, stop and dry. Look at how we're going through here. We're just, we're doing so good. We're blending a little more down here, making sure there's lots of room for our mountains, making sure there's wonderful bits of this color coming up into the sky. Clay, you've got time. We've got time. I'm here with you. We've got time. You can do this. You can go sweet, 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 can't you? Yep. You can. You've done 50 things this week harder than this. Squeak, 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 squeak. Even though in this moment you may not feel so. Mm. It's okay. <laughs> Sometimes things feel challenging in the moment, don't they? Look at this. We're just blending this. But this works because the paint is wet. You know, I've got the brush. Look at how the brush is shaped and formed. All right. Look at our gorgeous sky. Like, we got to start there. And it's almost a shame to put raindrops over it, isn't it? Oh, man. Now, I'm going to take these, make sure that they are rinsed out. You don't want to leave paint in your brushes. I'm going to have them aside just in case I need them again. And, oh my gosh, there we are. So skies, wow, they can be intimidating. But don't let them intimidate you. You can do this. You've got this. If it's your first time doing it, remember to be a little forgiving of yourself. We don't just like ride a bike or stand up on a surfboard or, you know, paraglide. Like if some things take a minute to learn, right? So you know, if you're in it and you're getting any part of it, I really want you to give yourself a hug and remember that it's okay to be in the learning process on how to do something. You can practice this a couple times. You can try it a couple times. Don't worry about that. It's all right to do that. Don't you think, John? Oh, yeah. You know, and if you guys are here in the chat, you know, say something encouraging to the new artists coming in. If you've been here for a minute and you know how to how to get through those bridges, like definitely give them a thumbs up and tell them they can do it because they don't know that right now if you're really new. You might not know you can, but you can. Now, for the next part, I do want it to be dry again. This is, I want this layer to be dry, so I'm going to thoroughly dry it with my hair dryer, which I'm not going to make you sit through. Um, remember, your drying time may be longer, may be shorter. Even in the live, you can pause the video. It won't affect the chat here on the replay. Pause, rewind me, mute me all you want. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to come back, and what are we going to do? We're going to do the next step of the painting, which you're going to be amazing at. So in art, there is a kind of laying out that is a cousin to drawing, but is not drawing. Um, this is a great time to use the traceable if you're not comfortable with this step and it's perfectly okay to use. That's why we provide them for free. That's why we show you how you can find them. That's why they're on the website, theartsherpa.com, for you to be able to use. I am going to show you how to block in your landscape. Um, and again, it's very simplified, so it, you don't need to get like stressed about it at all. If ever you've had a feeling that you couldn't draw, this is not a place that you have to even unpack that one because it doesn't it doesn't go here because right. we're not really drawing, we're blocking, which is just kind of a distant cousin. So I need to be able to say up here is sky, here's kind of a middle ground, and here's sort of a foreground. And to do that, I block in some structural lines. I'm going to take a big Brush change, I'm going to take a number six uh, round in the uh, ruby set, no, black pearl line from uh, silver brush, and I'm going to get a little white paint on it, and I'm going to sketch in white paint. You could use chalk, but the first thing that I want to do is I kind of want to make a curved line coming over here from about the middle of the surface, right, and I'm going to kind of come a little bit above the corner, and I'm going to curve this line. This is This is a road that's coming off here. This is my little vanishing road. There we go. And then I really want it to be quite exaggerated. So I'm going to come here to the corner. And I'm going to bring this around. So this, this road, some of this road, we're not even going to see, man. It's going to go away. Yeah. And there's going to be a little tree peeking over and stuff. The other thing that I have is I have a little bit of distant mountain. Oh. So a bit above my halfway point on the left. I can kind of stroke this little hill down and say, oh, there's some little distant mountains. Okay, there they are. Look at where I know things are now, right? I know I got a little little housey cabin here. I got maybe some some other little snow banks that are coming in, right? That I know about. Just distant little bits and then a road that's vanishing. Yeah. So 
It's like drawing, but it's not drawing. It's just something to mentally help your mind know where stuff is. All right. Really, this is the whole step for this step. But it's just important to know what it is. And even if you're really new to painting, I believe that you can block it in. I know that you've got this in you. So I know that you can do this. If you have any questions or you're having a moment, man, throw those up in the chat. Remember, put those all in caps if you're here during the live or hit it in the comment section if you missed the live show. Um, and I will answer them. I mean, I'm here to help you. We're here to help you. Let's dry this though before we move on. So I've added another color to the palette and that is to create some distant snow. I added burnt sienna and to the quinacridone magenta, ultramarine blue, thalo blue, cad yellow medium and titanium white. And I'm going to very loosely brush in the landscape. I'm going to use a bright, this is a number 18 bright by Raphael, but it's got a hog bristle in it. And I like that because it's scratchy. If you have something else, that's fine. I just like the effect this gives me. I'm going to get it a little bit wet and wipe off the extra moisture. And I'm going to take some some of my burnt sienna over to my ultramarine blue and what that's going to do is give me kind of a very grayed out blue and i'm going to come along this little mountainside yeah kind of wiggling my brush and i'm going to very just lightly and roughly even i'm going to brush down some of this darker color oh yeah i can then get into a little more white as i'm going And just start to think about how this little distant hill is maybe a little further, maybe a little more in shadow. How I'm going. And again, this is that beginning kind of sketching in of distant landscape. If I want to raise this for any reason, right? Sometimes you'll want to, to create interest in your hills. You can. You can kind of come here and maybe make a slightly darker gray area kind of dumping the valley now coming forward i can be whiter in my mix so you notice that i'm adding more white to it i'm still being rough i can curve these brush strokes around kind of to imply the directionality of the road or the form of the landscape right ah. so like the way my brush flows across the canvas kind of says, oh, that might be a hill going down. And then if it goes up, it might be a hill going up. So even your brush directionality can help people go, oh, I think I know what's there. Right? So we're just trying to create a little sense of what could be there. I know that I've got a little bit of a tree that will be coming up over here. So some things I don't need to put too much detail in, and that's just because the tree is going to be covering them. Right? Back into this little kind of snowscape and we'll come around with this. So this isn't the lightest color I'm going to be using. And you'll notice I'm pretty rough, you know, with the type of brush stroke that I've got going on. I'm not tidy at this stage. Just getting some kind of look to it. So let's look around and we can see the roughness. There is always some thought to what I'm doing, but it's not about like being super perfect in that moment, right? It's about generalizing and then drilling down into more specific spaces. Now I want to darken the area around the road and I'm not even rinsing my brush and I'm going to get a little of my magenta and ultramarine together. And I'm going to just I come along here and say, well, that's a little bit more in shadow than you might expect. That purple. And maybe this here is a little bit more in shadow. That would be like uh, the snow maybe has some depth to it or the road has some, you know, uh, kind of drop downs. And then we can even loosely, uh, let's add some white to it, brush the kind of flow of the road. 
The flow of the road, my friends. Yeah. Look at us go. We're just going. So I'm from the bottom and I'm just stroking up and following the direction of the road. You can see a curve in my stroke. There it is. It's curving. And that follows these two guidelines. Oh. Huh. Right? And they kind of come together up here, which is going to be really covered by a tree. You won't really see it. And I can bring some, maybe some brown down into it. Notice I haven't rinsed my brush. Look at how messy my brush is. Oh, yeah. So it's just very painterly. Pulling that in, lightly brushing. I can come and get some of my turquoise that I made from before. I'm mixing in loosely those colors that I made. Creating some mud and distance and energy in that road. It's messy, but fun. And it gives us a start to put in the rest of our more considered landscape that we might be thinking about, okay? So sometimes painting loose or relaxing can actually be very nerve wracking in art. So I want you to take a deep breath and know that um, you're super capable of this. Uh, it can take a second to get confident or comfortable in the skill. And um, remember that every brush stroke kind of implies a shape or direction. So be a little thoughtful about that. It's hard to make the road curve if the lines don't curve, or it's hard to make the hill slope if the lines don't slope. So we've got value, how light or dark something is, but we've also got the way that we use our brush stroke to express it, which you've got handled. Okay. <sighs> John. Yes. Aren't they doing great? They are doing fantastically. You guys are doing great. We've got it this year. All right. Let's, we don't even really have to worry too much about our surface drying at this stage, but let's come back and we're going to continue to add details and elements that start to create a sense of this landscape as we go. So let's get on into this step. You've come really far. Uh, you might be feeling like some kind of a way about the road at this stage, but I want you to let that go because we're putting a big honking tree here, which is going to really kind of block a lot of this. And so your mind's going to fix that bend around the curve, kind of no matter how you got it. So we can breathe deep and just enjoy the process. Now, before we put in our big tree, let's add a little more detailing to our snow. I'm going to continue on with this bright brush that's the 18. I can never say this correctly. It's a Jeanne Raphael bristle brush. Any bristle brush. It's nice to have some bright bristle brushes in bristle brushes in your collection because uh, they give you a nice rough texture. Mm. That's why I like to have them around. Now, I don't want totally purely uh, uh, white snow, so I'm going to add just a little all terrain blue to my titanium white. I've put out a little Mars black on the palette over right after we dried. So you want to make sure that you've got a little of that there. Let's come here and come to the back and very lightly. My brush is kind of at an angle. I'm going to come along this little line here and sort of dry brush some snow. I might allow it to kind of let this be maybe a a dark little valley, perhaps. Again, don't worry about it too much here because what are we sticking there? Big honking tree, John. Hmm. Honking tree. tree. It goes honk honk. Now I'm going to come along uh, this embankment. And I will go ahead and kind of curve these brush strokes over. It's still kind of a dry brush, though, if you guys can see that. It's very much a dry brush. Um. And it's pretty close to a pure white, but it is not a pure white. Sometimes you might grab a little bit of pure white like that, and that's okay. And I may come here and be like, ooh, just a little bit of light bri dry brushing because I want another layer. So notice that this dry brushing is really quite that. The brush doesn't have a lot of water on it. The paint load is light, as you can see, and I'm just letting the paint kind of Blend or dust the surface of the canvas, giving us more of a little snower effect. Yeah. little snower effect. Now here, same thing, but I might come back stroking the opposite direction from inside out to kind of create the little embankment like you do. Like we do. 
Like, like somebody does. Yeah. Like we're doing today. That kind of curve really helps it feel like a snowy embankment, doesn't it? It does. Leveling it out as it comes around, you know, that corner, because what we want to exaggerate is right here. Maybe there's a little more blue in the brush as we come forward where there might be like the snow is white, but perhaps at the corner there's a bit more shadow. And then as I come up over, look, we can just come in with the white. Oh, yeah. Kind of add. This is again dry brushing. And that's kind of a challenging technique if you're really new to painting, right? So it's a good technique to practice. And if you ever do anything in painting and it seems hard, practice that small thing. Practice that technique. You know, because you can do it. You just might need a little practice. Yeah. I like to make sure that these edges are a little rough and you know, kind of considered. I'm going to rinse this brush out. Sometimes when you've been dry brushing for a minute, um, it can be challenging for you because the uh, paint starts to dry on the brush. Now I, I can, um, I'm going to take a look at that and see if I like where it is. And then I'm going to add a little bit of white in the snow. Now, if you imagine here, and I'm going to take a little bit of my altering blue and my burnt sienna, right? Right. Coming here, say there might be a little bit of press down in this area because of the wheels of something, right? Yeah. And it'll be a little bit widest here. And then like the road, it's going to narrow as it goes away. And I'm not trying to make it super detailed. I'm even letting it be a little bit transparent. Our mind's eye is just thinking about it a bit, you know, going, oh, yeah. could be a thing, maybe not a thing. It's not sure. Just light brushing. Yeah, and I, I'm letting the paint, look, there's a little bit of damp water on here, and it's almost a glaze because it's a bit of a transparent application. And go back into what made my purple, which is my ultramarine blue, and my quinacridone magenta. Right, That's our peri, our little pear color. I can even mix it into that. I can kind of make this definitely there, but maybe not such an even. Yeah. You know, maybe there's a bit of irregularity to it. Because sometimes things just will be irregular and I can... Give a little a bit road. to the and, inside of that track, perhaps. and Yeah, just a disappearing road. There is. It's just, it's kind of having a little moment. It's thinking about what it wants to do. and Because, you know, roads have lots of thoughts. <laughs> kind of you pulling know, they, that back there, kind of thinking about how that's going to be. I like it. Alrighty, pants. So, as we're going along here, I want to continue to add some light snow. And I'm going to make sort of some irregular, like a little bit across. You can see me kind of going a little bit across and then wiggling forward. And that's some kind of creating to create that patchiness. Mm -hmm. See how that creates like an implied patchiness? Oh, it does. You know, and I'm letting a lot of what's underneath there show through. A thing to avoid back here would be getting this too bright because if it was really bright white, it would pull it towards you. All right. And again, remember, we have that big forgiving tree coming soon. So, you know, when you have a big forgiving tree, there's a lot you can do. Again, I pull across and up a bit and I wiggle that around. Kind of creating a little rough dimensionality. The way roads kind of sometimes will have a bit of a rough dimensionality, won't they? Mm -hmm. If I'm going over my dark shadow color, I can lighten my pressure and allow it to be a little glazy at those edges. Heavier in some spots. I can even come in and uh, lighten some of it up close here.
And you just keep kind of checking that out until you're like really happy with your road. It's your yeah. road. You can take it where you want to take it. You know, maybe pull a slightly brighter bit of snow here. See, it's a little bit rainy today, so things are a little bit grayer and soggier. Yeah. And even though we have this pretty color sky, it's still a rainy sky. The clouds are just interesting. Mm -hmm. You know, and sometimes you'll be under one cloud and see a different horizon, which is always so fun. I like the purple shadows rather than it being muddy and brown. Mm-hmm. Like they're cool and they're, they're cool, man. I don't know. Maybe they're cool. <laughs> purple. Purple. Okay. So... I might dry my surface before I go on to the next step. And that's so I can rest my hand and think about elements um, that I'm going to want to have here and there. Uh, so go ahead and dry yours. Remember, like we're always saying, dry before the next step. But remember, your drying time, my drying time might be different. So if you're here during the live or the replay, hit that pause button. So you dry and then I dry. And then we're back together. Together. Doing it together. So that's how we're going to time that out. Okay? All right. So when we get back, yep. more gorgeous art that we're doing together. Now, coming on to this next bit, I'm thinking there's a lot of orders that I could do things. I could put in our little cabin shed. I could add our distant trees. I can add our big tree. And I'm going to come into the big tree earlier because once it's in, I'm going to see that it covers up uh, quite a lot of stuff, right? And, um, you know, I really, really want to make sure how that looks before I put in those other objects for balance. Now... I want to make sure, John, that the tree grows mostly straight. Mostly. Mostly. Mostly straight. Not completely straight, but, and I want to have it have a little bit of space from the edge. So that's kind of like how you decide, like, where am I planting my tree? Because this line will be kind of the center of the tree. And if I want some branches to come over here, it lets me know, you know, where the tree needs to be planted. Now I'm going to take um, a filbert at first. And I'm going to, believe it or not, just get a little of my altering blue and black together. They kind of make a Payne's gray. And I'm going to decide how tall is the tree, right? How tall is the tree? So if I grow the tree and I go tap, 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 see me going down? Tap and tap and tap and tap and. Is this, is this line straight? Or no, I'm crooked. Yeah, it's a T-squarish. The, line is the tree square is straight. I'm crooked. <laughs> There you go. All right. So we're getting that kind of sense of scale. We know, okay, that tree like takes up this space. Now I'm going to show you some cool tricks. Um, first, we're going to come up and we're going to do this top of this tree, right? And we're going to add, give it some little detailing branches. You know, and sometimes those are a little bit kind of up at the top of a tree because they're lighter and they haven't had a chance to get broken by the weight of things. You know, and then as you go, the tree can actually have branches that maybe go down a little bit, right? There we go. Mixing up some more. Mm. All terrain blue, Mars black. This is a number four filbert. Um, it's a synthetic bristle. Uh, it's got a nice fingernail shape to it, so I like that. can be a little challenging to buy brushes. I get it, guys. I do. The thing is, when you're building your tree, realize that it's going to be wider down at the base. Mm -hmm. You need to have shadow to build up on winter trees. And you want to have branches that look like they've been weighted, broken, have grown in irregular levels. All right. You know, maybe some part of your tree lets the trunk show through. Maybe it doesn't. Um, you can do these a lot of ways. Like you could do it real fast with a fan. Mm -hmm. You can combine a fan um, with a filbert, which is an interesting combo where you combine the two. Um, but we're just going to do filbert today. Notice I'm kind of bringing in this branch now and kind of making some art artful decisions about its little contour shape where it comes out and goes back in and comes out and goes back in. It's got a little finger, a little personality. Mm -hmm. it's 
okay to take a couple figure branches, some big branches that are important, and work them out so that the overall composition of your object feels good. That makes sense. Those things are okay. All right, just going. Loving it. Let's keep going. We can do mm. it. Looking good. All right, there we go. Coming down a little more. Fill out that tree. It's a healthy tree. Does not have beetles or anything. No beetles. None, none, none. There we go. Cool. This little. I like the colors of the background here. Do you? Yeah. They're kind of pleasant, right? Well, the idea is that when you put this in a frame and hang it on your wall, it'll look like you're looking out a window. You know, maybe you're painting this in uh, winter and it's just a lovely winter scene. Maybe you're painting this in summer to feel like, you know, the heat, get a break from the heat. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's hard to know the reasons one might have for painting. It's always nice to try to give that a little kind of ragged edge, a thoughtful edge. You know, like, what are you doing? And you can see I kind of bring the brush up and tap it down and then even pull those bristles in. I do a lot to give that rough edge. Mm -hmm. I'm working hard to make sure that my tree has some rough edges. And I can come in, you know, just like I planned over here, I can make sure that I've got some nice... Interesting, consider branches coming over here. They should be irregular. Um, it's tempting to make ladders. You know, when you're trying to go, I know, you know, you know it's kind of rough and irregular, but you want to make a ladder. And uh, you got to get out of those habits. But it takes time. So if you're there right now today, be forgiving of it. Mm -hmm. you no. Know? The measure of enjoyment of something should not be that you're perfect at it day one and, and every moment of it. Yep. Right? Even the best of the best of the best, sir, like the Olympians, right? Sometimes you land the double axle, sometimes you win. <laughs> but that's not why you skate, hopefully. <laughs> well, hopefully you're not skating because you've got a mom yelling at the sidelines telling you're going to be a skater when you grow up. But, you know, hopefully you skate because you're, you love it and... The sport just gives you joy. And so the days you land, the axe will kind of counterbalance the days you don't. <laughs> painting should be like that. Days that the painting comes together should far exceed in that way the, the ways that you don't. Now, I want you guys to have a second to, um, you know, see this here and kind of know that this is going on. Um, we, uh, you can come at, at it when it's wet and a lot of the paint to blend on the canvas but i think in this case if we have control you want to um overhead yeah okay so um you know we have control and then you can kind of capture the shape here see this kind of overall shape and it's good to look at it You're like do you want a tall skinny tree it's a very tallish i like this shape tree yeah it's kind of an interesting little shape tree maybe you want your tree fatter you know, how you want your tree is like up to you, but this is that time we make that decision. This is the contour of the tree before we come do the details, right? Because we're going to come in and add two more layers. We're going to add a middle kind of value of snow, which is like the cool snow. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to add like the snow that's really highlighted that really pulls the tree together. And um, th those are like the two things. So let's come back and make that its own kind of step. That way we can really focus on it and how we get it done to take the shape and turn it into a tree. So at this point, you don't need it to be completely dry, but it is nice if it is dry because it'll layer a little bit better. And it really depends on your studio conditions. Remember that yours can vary from mine a little bit. And depending on humidity and dryness and all those things, your paint may be drying faster or slower. Um, so remember, you're always making adjustments from your experience to my experience. Even though we're together, I'm only here in video. <laughs> I'm only streaming. So I may be having a slightly different studio experience. I'm going to continue on this awesome painting journey. You ready to come with me? I'm ready. Grab that filbert again. All right. 
They're going to do it. We're going to do it together. Let's get it. Let's All right. So now we need to make some kind of like snow, but we want it to be not the whitest snow on the snowbank. <laughs> mm -hmm. So we're going to add a little bit of white into our altering blue. I'm going to come here and, like, say down here. I'm going to stay on the side view here because it's a little easier to see. All right. Well, side view for a second. I'm going to just pull up little, little kind of marks, and I'm going to be talking a bit about this little individual branch right here. I actually come backwards up the tree this way because trees like this can be like scales. Same sort of principles sometimes. The big thing to remember is that you want to um, leave dark shadows. Don't get so excited in the painting the white snow that's hit on your tree branches that are weighing them down that you forget the dark shadows that help your tree branches have shape. Mm. If you're going to go over the area where you have kind of a similar white, we're going to have to come back with like a brighter white. So just be present to that like here and there where we're laying some heavy little snow out. And I sometimes will come in and drag the brush back, making little defined marks. See how there's a little more defined? And that also kind of helps shape the tree. It does. I did a TikTok video where I did a fan brush uh, versus a filbert. I may actually make it a YouTube video. Mm. Um, by the time you see this, I may have already scheduled one up. I don't know. I never know what I'm doing. Um <laughs> Uh, if I do, then you'll get to see it here, too. But it really was about that. And everybody really liked the filbert better. Yeah. You know, maybe over here, I'll go a little darker with my blue in the snow. Watch this. So it oh, kind of yeah. shows against this side. We'll make this side the shadow side. So maybe a little darker. And those are little adjustments that you'll make if this value isn't really letting you see it against the background. That's how you play them monochromatics. Let's really take that off there and talk about this little heavy laden branch. But if I get too much up there, then I'm not really going to be able to see the downward branches. And the downward branches are what make it. Mm -hmm. I can always go back with a little bit of shadow if I feel like I lost it. So your branches are in, you know, that's an inner journey. Can I maybe pull some more blue into here so that it's a little more unified? And that's that dance that we're doing is how light or dark does it need to be to be that first layer of snow. Come here and you know, keep giving it that tons of personality. Hmm. Those tree branches should have personality. It's it takes a minute to get used to it. Growing your branches in paint. But you'll get there. Mm -hmm. Now as I come up here. I'm going to kind of get into maybe some of my lighter kind of color. Maybe right here. Mm -hmm. Make some sort of forward branches that are facing me a little more directly. So you can see I'm leaving those shadows. And capturing that, that kind of shape and shelving of the branch. That's really cool. Now I do need to come down here and kind of... Add a little shadowing of some dark snow, right? The dark snow. 
dark snow. You just build it up. Play with it till it's playful, till it's a winter fantasy. Mm -hmm. I'm going to rinse out. And here's where we're going to get like drama. We're going to load up some very white snow. Maybe it has a little bit of the ultramarine in it, in the brush. See, those are little bits of the branch that maybe caught some light. Not everything. I just love how this looks. Isn't it fun? Really, really. And that's like little bits of branches that are maybe, mm -hmm. you know, thicker or heavier. Just play with it. You'll notice that I work the edge of the brush, right? That's a, a thing I like to do. Just find your tree in here. I like that little branch went beep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it got flirty there. Little, little bits. Little bits. Little bits. Look at those little, little fussy details. We got them. Fussy, fussy details. Look at those little fussy details. Doesn't that tree just have some lovely snow on it? Very nice. Such nice snow. And then, you know, coming up here... Right, I'm gonna just tap this and over here and tap, 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 tap. Get a little bit of delicates now. You just want to play with this now. I feel like this branch needs some extra love. We can really see it and feel it. And that's the next thing that you're kind of trying to do is like, where do I need to put some love on these branches? Imagine the snow is just loving on that tree. Yeah. You know, tree doesn't have to be perfect, by the way. That's not its job. But all trees are perfect. But all trees are perfect. All right. Look at that. Let's look at that. Oh, it's an interesting little sentinel being there on the snow. It's got some dark shadows. Now, while we've got that, here's the thing that we're going to do. Come here again with our blue and our brown. And that great gray. That's kind of like a glaze. Uh, I do have glazing meaning, but at this at this point, you know, we can... Just absolutely easily glaze under the tree. So that's the thing that you can do to really help your tree look like it's weighted. 
Nice. So if it has a little bit of shadow, right? Just a little bit. Get a little of the purple involved. Kind of deepen that in there, right? Just a little bit of shadow under the snow. Mm -hmm. Fun stuff. Okay, guys, we painted a tree. That is pretty fantastic. We're just whipping through this. So come back and we're going to continue on our journey for a scene through our rainy window. And you're going to love what we do next. So at this stage, we're going to put in um, some little background trees and start some thoughts on our... Uh, cabin, let's put out our cad red medium at this stage. The cad red medium, John. Mm -hmm. I'll put it right here because it's close to yellow and the black, which we're going to be using. And, and maybe it's a shed, maybe it's a cabin. That's kind of a, you know, it's enough for a debate thing. Sure. It's debatable. It's debatable. It's debatable. I am going to use a small angle brush um, to put this in. And the reason I'm going to use a small angle is because it's a little bit like a bright, but it'll give me nice controlled drawing lines. Right. For everything, and I'm going to decide where I'm going to put it. And I'm going to put my cabin here. Hmm. So I'm going to take a little bit of my, oh gosh, my cad red and my Mars black. I'm going to make a dark color. Got dark color. Here's the thing, though. Straight lines, man. What's the thing? you got to have straight lines on your cabin. So I'm going to give myself a first straight line. You know, I, I know you feel strongly that architecture should have straight lines, and believe you me, most inspectors do too, but it's rarely the case. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go over a little bit, like about an inch, and make another little line. Maybe this one comes down a little further because, you know, the cabin goes down, and then you can have another little line over here that's the back of the cabin. That's about the same length, right? Just generally. Is what we're doing. And I'm just trying to, despite John's encouraging words, I am trying to, you know, have it be pretty straight. I come in the middle and I'll make another generalized vertical line and I will then use that to create the triangle of my roof. Right. So I just kind of come in the middle and then go up. I'm kind of like, looking over your shoulder so we can see it. That's triangle. And make a little roof lines there. Two little parallel lines. It goes a little bit past and it connects. Now what's great is the cabin is, again, John's right, cabin, shed, whatever it is in your mind. Um, maybe a little fishing shack. I don't know. This is your painting. And every painting has a little bit of a fantasy going on in it of how we live inside of it. Mm -hmm. How we relate to it. So. I don't want to tell you where to be. I do paint this down a little bit more than I need because I'm going to put a snow bank over it in front of it. As you do. Mm -hmm. Well, as we all do. A little more black there because I want it dark. Dark. And a little more black here. The top of the roof line, Dirk. I'm going to pop lots shadow. of red on it, but yeah, you got to have a little bit of shadow. Speaking of, hmm. let's get some of that dark gray snow color that we like so much. This will be quite dark at first. Very shady. Very shady. I got a little bit of my roof line there. That'll happen. And I got a fuzzy hair. Mm. These things happen, and then we make them go away. Whoop. <laughs> Whoop. <laughs> that's, that's the solution there. Technical stuff, kids. You saw it live happening in your life. Going, oh, yeah, she really did that. Yeah, I do. Don't edit that out, right? Keep that in. Be real about that. Don't cut away. 
why would we cut away? Now, this can have a little dry. Mm -hmm. And while it's having a dry, I'm going to go ahead and take the filbert. And I'm going to mix a pretty dark purple over here, my quinacridone. Mm -hmm. Right? Pretty deeper than, um, deeper than Perry for sure. And I'm going to think about this sort of distant maybe tree line. I'll come along the hill. Kind of paint along that a bit. And then I'm going to pull upwards, creating a little bit of a rough line. Now, I may have to turn my canvas to the side just to have a nice result right here. That's okay. Right. These are sort of like a distant little tree line. I'm going to just make sure the edges of these are sort of rough and like the tops of little individual trees. It's important it goes up and down. And also I don't, even though I line along the hill, I don't want it to look, see the line. Mm -hmm. That's just so I have a nice tight little thing there. So you can always come, I'll come in with just even some ultramarine blue. Come along that little line there. Let's taper those little trees down a bit, you know, in the distance. Mm -hmm. Isn't that nice? <laughs> and then we have to decide, do we want some counterbalancing over here? And that might actually be very good. I'm going to come up there. Yeah, I am a little quiet sometimes when I'm enjoying something and I'm really thinking about how it is. You know, I was kind of just drifting off there looking at you too. It was like, like a little bit quiet right trees. now. now. I'm being kind of fussy because I've got little tree branches here and I don't want to mess with them. That's okay. I like how the little trees look in the distance. They're nice and in the distance, aren't they? They provide that mid-ground divide that says, look at the sky. <laughs> now I'm going to take a little bit of that glazy snow color. Kind of uh, creating a little depth in the bank, right? Mm. A little depth in the bank. It does create that, doesn't it? De depth in the bank. I'm making a regular and pulling it down there. Just never know. Okay, we've got lots of snow to add, so this is okay. All right, that was a lot. We did a lot right there, didn't we? Yeah. We're doing really good. Um, because I want to break these down into digestible bits, um, what I may continue to do is I might add just a little bit of drama shadow here, and then we'll call it a step, because I don't want to get so far ahead of you. Let's add a little bit of, a little bit of what? Up the road. Oh, yeah. Just a little bit there. Sometimes it's nice to have some depth in it. Just kind of making some irregular little shapes. These are some deeper shadows, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, you see that, and then you go into that, and those depths really do make a difference. The depths of the road. All right. When we come back, let's add a little more detail to our cabin.
Okay. Okay. We're going to do it, though. I'm, I'm for it. He's for it. Are you, you're for it, right? Like you're at That's this point in the for. painting, you might as well. Don't you get frustrated at this stage and then put it up. You finish all the way with me because your big growths are going to be in those paintings that you complete. So you're about eh, halfway through. You're good. If you're here, you can get, this is the top of the hill. Everything is down and I'm with you the whole way. So you're going to complete this painting. All right. So do come back. I see you. They're here. I see you. <laughs> come back and we'll keep on the step. So here you are, and we're about to add the fun color on this distant little building uh, that's inviting you and is such a lovely part of the landscape of the view that you're seeing through this rainy window. To do that, we're going to kind of layer up some colors. We want to add a black a little snow there, and we want to kind of brighten it up. I'm going to begin with the snowier roof. Um, and what I find is nice is I'll generally take the dark snow color that I made or the dark roof color and then come up with a much lighter um kind of a snow color, kind of a snow color. What am I saying? I'm going to use a little of the ultramarine blue and a little burnt sienna uh, that we had done in the roof, but really lighten it up to create snow because that's going to create value. And I'm going to use this quarter inch angle. Now on the corner of the brush, I'm just going to come along here and dry brush a little bit of he like heavy snow that's maybe on this building. It's okay if it gets a lot more into the white and come to the back here. I'm going to come back the other way. And that kind of just shows that snow there. All right. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come along the edge of this building. And see how the brush is so sharp that I can kind of... Like a little bit of thick snow, can I? Yeah. There you go. It's just all it really takes for it to feel like something is something has landed up there. Now, I do want the cabin to be much redder. So when I get my cad red with my little angle, it's going to have a smidge of the Mars black in it, but a ton less. Mm. Ooh. Right, and we're going to red that up. Now, over here where I feel like there's shadows, I'm going to be a little lighter with it. All right, and I'm kind of just gla just brushing and glazing that down. And the reason it's okay to have it be rough like this is because um, that'll make the building look like it's got a patina. Oh. You know, that sort of like aging or finish that can make something look uh, older. All right, that's looking pretty good. It looks like an old building that could be happening. The window is pretty simply the cad red and cad yellow. Hmm. Kind of a bright orange. Now a little bit of that there. I'm coming with red again. Come under the window. And that bright is around the window because the window has a little bit of a glow. Hmm. Yep, but we keep uh, under the eaves a little dark. It can be a little bit darker at the side of the house, but it shouldn't be quite this dark. So I'm going to add just a little bit of maybe like back here where the light from the little valley might be coming up, adding a bit of color. Uh, don't mind that. That's looking pretty good. Now, let's let this have a little bit of a dry. And while it's having a bit of a dry, I'm going to add some twigs, some bits of interest. Um, maybe we'll start with purple and see how that looks. And then if it's not enough, we'll darken it up. Because a lot of times what you'll see is you'll see dark twigs out in the snow. I might even still get it into the black because you'll see these are real dark. I'm going to use my half inch angle brush. I use the sh short end of the brush at the beginning of the stroke and finish it with the long bristles. Oh yeah. And I'm just going to make some little
twigs, you know? They're just out there in the snow, just being they're like, hey! Some stuff was here this summer, but it's not here now. I like those. Sometimes they have little little bits of elements. It's just nice to branch them off. They're really kind of, you know, and they tend to line a road. The reason being that, um, you know, uh, there's a there's a space for them to grow. Well, lots of travelers would drop apples and fruit and all sorts of things along the side of the road, and that would cause all sorts of things to be growing. Well, outside of the Johnny Appleseed part of this, I think what it is is, is these are little little hardy grasses. Grasses. <laughs> this were a, a road for a wagon, I think it would look very different. Leave me my, to my nostalgia. It's travelers dropping fruit. You're just there. You're like, it's travelers. Just a little bit here and there. It's okay, you know? Maybe put a little bit of dark spots in the snow. We've got a lot of raindrops coming down, so, you know, uh, less is more sometimes. Mm. A bit here and there. Guess what's dry now? The little house. Yeah, the little house. So we're going to take, oh gosh, just a little bit of our brightest snow. Add some water to it. It's okay if it's got a little blue in it, but it's got to be brighter than the snow around it. And I'm going to come here. Kind of add a bit of a bank there. See, that just creates a little shape there in that distance. It really does. And then, uh, you know, yeah, there might be a little more here. It's kind of up along the side of the house. Yeah, it is. I bet it's a little darker, isn't it? And the, and the bright bank that's going in front. I like it. And then we can also kind of maybe uh, come along here and talk about a little bit of a bright bank along there. Kind of picking up those highlights and letting the shadow kind of form a little bit of a... Popping it back. Look at us go. That's so nice. All right, so this is like the landscape. If you're not into the water drops, you're done. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. This could be just here. If you're like, I'm good here. I don't need the rainy part of the scene at all. It's not that special to me. <laughs> well, oh, my gosh. Thank you for your time. You should stay all the way to the end because uh, we have extra information for you that you might really, really want. Um, but feel free to fast forward from here. Uh, <laughs> But if you'd like to know how to do this type of rainy effect on a window, I've got a really cool way to show you. And I think it's worth staying for. Yeah. It'll be fun. It really will be fun, actually. I think you'll dig it. All right. So let's let everything really dry so we can do a glazing effect when we come back. We have gotten so far in this painting john i know it's so cute you guys have done so good at home i cannot wait to see your version of this painting if you've decided to continue on and do the water drops with me you're going to be so glad you did because i'm going to show you how to make rainy window effects on any painting so you can always turn any scene into a scene through your rainy window Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> which is actually pretty fun um Things to say is it's it's good to get wiggly and wobbly right now. That's going to be the kind of key to what we're doing. Uh -huh. So let's get down small. Get me small into it. 
sir. Oh, thank you, I'm so little. And I'm going to show you my secret weapon. Okay. All right. So this is gloss glazing liquid. Now, if you don't have this, you will notice that we did several glazes without any glazing liquid. Um, I like this because it lets me put just a little more pigment in there, but still get a glazy effect. Um, but if you don't have it, I still want you to learn the technique. So if you have to glaze without the glazing liquid, which is a great binder, just make sure that um, you allow um, your water drops to bind before you varnish. And I might spray varnish instead of brush varnish. Mm -hmm. Right? So that's what I'm going to do. Put out some of this ooey gooey magic. Ooey gooey magic. Uh-oh, it's magic. All right. Choo, 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 choo. Number four round. Oh, I love it. I'm going to get this brush uh, vaguely wet and then wipe off on a paper towel because I don't need it that wet. And then how I like to glaze is I kind of load my brush up with this. Now, this is a slow drying agent and it's a glaze, this particular product that I like. And I'm going to take a lot of my all-terrain blue and a little a smidge of my burnt sienna. Kind of takes it into kind of a blue-green color. All right. So I get that and I'm going to begin to put in my water drops. Now, the first two that I'm going to do is I'm going to do the long ones. Okay. So I'm going to start from the bottom and then go up and it's going to be wiggly. All right, I'm going to let you do that and I'll kind of watch. See how it goes. Sometimes the line will be, you know, thick. Sometimes I'll come back like that. You want it to be just so weird and random because water drops, if you all remember Jurassic Park, do you? Do you? Do you? If you remember Jurassic Park, and it's okay if you don't, um, our wonderful, uh, what was the guy, Jeff Goldblum, uh -huh. Malcolm, uh, talked about uh, chaos theory and the way you couldn't follow the water drops, right? So I always like to think about that a little bit when I'm doing a water drop, especially when it goes down, because uh, I feel like it gets me into the essence of the idea. Mm. So this is kind of a gray color, and it's just, you can't really get it wrong. Sometimes it feels like we can get things wrong, but can't really get it wrong. Now I'm going to do one that kind of comes up here partially. And at the top, let's, uh, you know, so maybe that's a drop Oops. that hit right there. Because, you know, it's your window. Oops, didn't mean to get the block. There we go. Da, 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 you da, were behind da. the drip. Behind the drip. The meaning behind the drips. Come up here and kind of, ooh. Every time you do them. Mm-hmm. There's a new opportunity to find yourself in the drip. And I'm going to have another kind of long one over here. And you got to sort of think about, you know, where these are going to go. Because you have a wonderful picture, right? Yeah. And you don't want to take away your picture. So that's nice. And you'll notice those lines are thick and thin. Yeah. Thick and thin. Through thick and thin. Remember that saying? I do. I'm with you through thick and thin, which is true for you and me, for sure. Because mm. we've done the thin, for sure. Uh, but a bunch of wonderful thick. Actually, I guess, actually, probably thick is the bad state and thin was the good state. I don't know. I don't know. We've done them all. We've done them all. We're good. And, and you know what? There wasn't really a whole lot of tangible difference between the two states. I think what happens when they, when they were doing the vows, and it was like, did you take this person for better or worse? We're like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> all the things. But you know what? When you're laying on the absolute bottom at the ground looking up, mm -hmm. there's something pretty about the stars. There is. Now I'm going to come to the top, and now I'm going to make some water drop shapes. And these are kind of what you might think of for water drops, that they have a bit of a drop to them, but uh, they're really kind of just like and a weird shape. Mm -hmm. They should be big. They should be small. They need to be both. Indeed. And they got to be everywhere. So we're here for a second. Do, 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 do. There's just a lot of this to do. I don't know. I'm just kind of watching you from over the shoulder a little bit so they can see how you use the tip there. I'm just trying to make weird shapes. Making some weird shapes. Those are good the shapes to make. You know, you can always weirdly put water on glass. You got a shower, you know, and it doesn't have a weird kind of rain X in it. You can go check this on your shower for ideas. Hmm. Did I do it? 
Yeah, I think it looks pretty good. Well, and I found like these don't really look like anything until you get the highlight and the shadow on them, and that's when they really pop out. And you know, whenever I look at uh, rain paintings online, it's always interesting to see who um, like studied the refraction of the water drop. Yeah. Right, because basically. A water drop on a surface has a very specific lens, right? I've taught that in a bunch of classes. But what rain is a lens, but it's one that flips the landscape. So um, if you're going to do details in it, you would have like some of those details in that. We're not going to. We're going to be very relaxed about this. Mm -hmm. But if you're getting hyper-realistic, you know, it's very interesting when you study that. But we're going to do basic because sometimes it's okay to be basic. You it know is. what? Vanilla is basic and vanilla bean is super good. Like, let's stop picking on basic things. Sometimes basic is good. Like, you know, un, un, unfiltered, un, what is it? Un, oh gosh, there's a really good way of uh, undoctored food. Or <laughs> Somebody had said it was like, oh, yeah untampered with that's how they refer to their food i don't want any tampered with food mm. but sometimes you know that's a good thing right yes so let's 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 give some love to the basic I like these little drops coming down. Yeah. Don't forget to put some drops on your tree. I like to make sure that I focus them a little bit where they'll show. Mm -hmm. So that um, you go to look at it, you'll be like, oh, yeah, that's definitely a drop. You want to have enough drops, right? But not so many drops that you can't see what you've already painted. It's a, it's a balancing. Gotcha. It's a balancing act, my friends. There's a concept in art called a passage, mm -hmm. which just means in this little moment right here, it's super pretty and it speaks to me. And so anyways, in that great passage art, right, you one of the things that's always crazy is artists like, we'll paint over our best passage. <laughs> <laughs> We're like, oh. But I do think it's important, like, like right here, this little bit here that goes right over the house. I think that matters. Because it just helps it look like a window. Right. Right? This could be your barn, for all I know, out there in the back 40. If you have a back 40. All right. I feel like I put some water drops on here. Yeah, those are nice drops. Let's rinse out your brush. Um, now, I'm going to dry this. I want you to know whenever you use gloss glazing liquid by Golden Artist Colors, um, it can take a little longer to dry than just regular paint because this has a slow drying agent in it. Uh, that's the whole point of it. It's a slow drying extender. Mm -hmm. So it might just take like twice the amount of time that it does for you normally in your hair drying. We're going to dry it and come back and add the little details that make it just mwah. So this is the magic step. Okay, John? Mm -hmm. Okay, you guys at home? Magic step. Um, and again, if there's any questions you have about any of this, ask in the live, all caps. We'll try to get to them. If we miss that, ask in the comments on the YouTube channel. I check that all the time. You watch this two years later, that's where you ask. I'm here to help. This is it. So what we're going to do is we are going to add a highlight that's not the brightest white, but it's a very light color to the front of the drops, right, to some of the uh, parts of the squiggle. I'll show you everywhere where. Then we're going to come back with black lines to the back of the drops and a little bit around the sides, but mostly the back of the drops down the lines of this. And then we finish with this golden fluid acrylic. You could just use your white paint thin. I just really like this a lot. And they do sell it in two ounce bottles, um, titanium white that we hit over the top. I'm not going to put it out until I'm ready to use it though because I don't want it to thicken at all. I want it to be as thin as it can be. Mm. All right. 
But let's begin with the highlighting. Shall I go small? All right. Not small. Not small in my heart, but small on the screen. Small, small. Teeny tiny. <laughs> Thank you, Hanky. <laughs> oh, no. All right. So I'm going to get my white. I'm going to pull that out. Now I've got my glaze color here, right? So I can pull some of that in. It's a much lighter color, but it's not just pure white because I want to reserve some room for pure white. Okay. Right? And then come to the front of the, the drop here. I put like, like a little glaze in there. You know, just in case I have some thin areas so it's not just opaque. Mm -hmm. Also because, honestly, it slows the drying time down of this too, so I have time to work out the little details. <laughs> kind of figure out where you want the drops to go. Yeah, well, I try to. Nature, you know, it, it loves a random thing. Mm-hmm. And uh, it likes to break it up. The patterns are not always easy to see. Look at snowflakes. Now they know that, like, there's, depending on the, the humidity and um, temperature and all that, they can see what kind of crystals or shapes a snowflake is going to make. Mm -hmm. And there's, like, very distinctive types of snowflakes. They're not always just those unique spir spires, you know. Yeah. Now, be sure you don't take out all of your dark because that is how you're going to find the shape again with your um, black paint. There we go. Let's come in here. Now, I'm just adding a few little high little drippy drops, too. Right. Drippy drops. Drippy drop, 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 drop. So that it's not all just too uniform. It could be. You you could just do like one and probably get away with it. With just like one little highlight and a black shadow. But let's. Let's not be quite that basic. Mm. <laughs> let's have some fun here. Let's play a bit. I'd say the hardest part of this is making sure you don't miss any of your drops. Because they kind of camouflage into the, the piece. Again. Front of the drop, right? It doesn't mean it doesn't have weird shapes going up into the drop, right? It just means that that's sort of the, the way the light is refracting. If you zoom, 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 like into right. these drops, you would see that barn upside down. You would just play if you zoom, zoom, zoomed into the drops. Not just this, not this, not this level of zoom. But if you went into super zoom, okay. I don't, I don't have that level of zoom. Uh, no, 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 no. I'm not going to paint that level of zoom either. Okay. We're not doing that today. <laughs> I was like, I can't. That's not zoom what that we're much. doing here today. <laughs> That'd be like kind of a. Crazy thing. If you ever look at a like glass ball and it's reflection of the world around it, reversed. Same thing. Bubbles too. Bubbles too. You know. Da 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 da. As we do it extra special. And you're special. Mm -hmm. We're all special today. Okay for people to be special. All righty. Just making sure we got nice little shapes going on there. So I rinse that out. Right? I've got those variants. Now I'm going to switch a brush. I wish I was like, switch the brush, like Soul Calibur. <laughs> brush switch. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to take this. This is number one monogram liner, and I'm going to thin my black paint here. Mm -hmm. Thin, 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 thin. I'm adding drops of water. It doesn't really take that much. 
And this is how you can also do the white if you uh, don't want to use the fluid at the end. I just like the fluid because it has a lot of pigment. So what are we going to do? We're going to come on the back. Oops. Look at that. I had I was zooming in through the one next to it. There you go. Oh, yeah. See? And that really makes them... See, like right now we're real close on it, but when they go from the above, yeah. it looks like they're sticking to the surface. Exactly, because the water creates both a highlight and a shadow. And that's the thing, when you paint a lot of water drops or on a glass or on a surface, you will notice, um, you know, some things. Like if this were on a surface, there'd be a bright lens in the back and a shadow coming forward. But in this case, on glass, the shadows at the sides and the back, the opposite. I love seeing like like people don't like. There's a funny bit where sometimes that is taught wrong online, hmm. and I mean like, hey, we're all barely there. Like we're all just kind of like holding on by thread right now, right? Mm -hmm. So like our drops can hold on any way they want to. It's really not that important. But it's just if you ever has have sat somewhere and like stared at a thing really intently, like oh, I'm stuck in the car. I'm going to stare at these water drops so hard. <laughs> so hard. So hard. Is that the 80s right there? <laughs> Generation X. I'm going to stare at you so hard. <laughs> Where careful observation comes across a little bit like a threat. <laughs> <laughs> this is a mall skill. <laughs> yeah, when you can look across the courtyard at someone so hard. Oh, dude, man. Yeah. Yeah, right? Them glares, them mall glares. Uh, With like, you know, the orange Julius sip where you like do that long sip. And you know it's not acknowledged it, except it that rolls the in the up. in the cup. What? Isn't it, you you know the only way you know that the stare has been acknowledged is that the pace has been picked up. Yep. Well, actually, I we had some pretty uh, tough people, so like usually the stare was returned. Oh yeah. 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 There was the gigantic double stuffed cookie of, oh, man. you know, the one that you would eat. And then after an hour of running around on cloud 11, to crash. I wasn't as much into that, but I like the icing on uh, the Cinnabon. Mm. But I was really like a C's candy cow. Love me some C's candy. Right. So I'm just working these drops, right? Getting these lines, getting that, staring at it so hard. But no, seriously, sometime when you're out and you're in the car, you've got your feet up and you've got your jams on and you're listening to the radio, wondering what has happened to music, as you do. Right? As you do. I want you to just really get in on that water drop. Zoom in, pull out those readers if that's where you are and get in on it. And look at that thing. Because it's interesting. You know what also works? Living your best life. Zoom on your phone. Okay. Or zoom on your phone. Like if you're like, I, I don't want, then you just. No, it's true. If you don't got readers, zoom on your phone. Because like, you know. Technology. Robot overlords. Like Google track that, right? <laughs> Why are they zooming on so many water drops? Let's send them water drop ads for like rain cleaner or something. I don't know. See, like that one really shows up down in the corner. I don't think you can see it down here. We gotta change position to where it's see right there. there. It is, yeah. yeah. Sometimes it's hard to see him when we're doing it. So that's you know, you gotta love it. You gotta be in it, right? So, mm -hmm. you know, you are where you are in your life right now and you've decided, hey, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna paint. I wanna paint something interesting. And I'm gonna paint with that crazy lady who has the hair. Cause for sure my viewers are broken down into people who were like, well actually the one category is not my viewers. They've just told me why, which is like, that is not an appropriate color of hair for anyone your age. I'm like, first of all, how you know? Did you Google me? You don't know. You have a general idea because face, but you don't know. You don't know me. You don't know me. And then uh, second of all, I'm like, you know, well, it didn't say there was an age limit on the package. So and they generally tell you. <laughs> supposed to use it remember that ages 7 to 99 i'm like what 99 year old is playing this game 
<laughs> but like that, you know, so like, so you've come here and you're not the, not the person who's like her hair color deeply and totally offends me to my soul. Right. And you're still here thinking I'm going to paint. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do this, man. Let's have some fun doing it. Let's not just paint the painting. Let's enjoy our process. That, okay, this is what my, you know, you know, 2020, I was trying to like help us like tap into that self-love. But this, this year I'm going to be like, let's tap into some joy. Indeed. Some jeu de vivre. Let's have some fun, man. The meaning and the joy of it all. So it's not fast, this process, as you can clearly see. You can see why a lot of creators would time lapse this nonsense. Mm -hmm. They would be like sensible people and they would go, you know, no one is going to sit here for an hour while you outline water drops. Whereas we have for seven years been like, they will sit here for the whole hour and watch me in real time. There shall be no time lapse for you or anyone. You shall not miss a moment of the heckling. None of it. None. None. And already, these are pretty decent water drops, aren't they? Yeah. I haven't even added the psh factor. I haven't even wowed it yet. There's a psh factor? There's a psh factor. Oh, my gosh. Well, About the same speed as this this psh. black line. So don't get too excited. It's We're a gonna... slow psh. Yeah, it's, a, it's like, it's like a, you know how like there's a reveal and it's a big reveal, but it'd be like if a peacock moved really slow. Oh. You mean like your curtains? <laughs> you like my curtains? We got her automatic <laughs> curtains, and they're they're you know, so they close up her little her little workroom, but they move so slow, so you can't <laughs> like make a pose and hit the thing. Otherwise, you're there for it goes. You're like I really need to have some quiet now, and you hit the button, and it's like. <laughs> so you can go over and strike a pose in front of it as it closes, <laughs> which John never misses the opportunity to do. <laughs> I don't know why that makes me always like when it happens. Think of like uh, the Office. Oh, it's a it's it's a very just office something thing to do. It's yeah, it just feels like a Dwight moment. <laughs> just, I'll take it if I need to be any of the member of the crew. I'll do it. Yeah, a little Dunder and Mifflin up in here. <laughs> da, 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 da. Ah, I miss Michael Scott. Here's some things I thought because I am, I was a, and I'm going to talk, as I outline these, I'm going to talk to you about just stuff that in the world. Okay. Just to help you stay like, kind of like, boom, boom, like I'm with you. So, you know, I'm with you. Okay. So this is not AM, ASMR. You probably have already figured that out. Um, <laughs> you've determined that. So like, of course, when it was out, I watched Second Sex in the City, right? Like when it came out, woo, that was super fun. And they've remade it. To varying response and drama, mm -hmm. as as you would expect, you know, there's all the the drama, the drama between Kim Cattrall and uh, Jessica Jessica Parker. What is what is? I don't know. That I don't know. Girl. The other lady. So, <laughs> whose name I can't remember right there's now. Like but I think, four of them. Right. Who's married they to Matthew? They all have Brown. different looks. They all have they all have different stuff going on, and they so got styles. You know, maybe it's good, maybe it's not. I mean, I'm enough of a longtime fan. I'm gonna hang in. You know, I'm not gonna give up till they take it off the air. So it's either gonna find its leg or it's not. But there's varying reviews. Here's my issue. First of all, if Sarah Jessica Parker and Kim Control don't like each other, fine. They're grown. They're rich. They're talented. They don't gotta be friends just because they work together. I know lots of people in an office. Speaking of the office, that are not friends. Can you imagine if Dwight and Jim like had like social media stuff going? <laughs> they got a cat fight. These these women are huge successes, producers, mega moguls, all this stuff, right? And they're like they're like it's a cat fight. Can you imagine if they remade like I don't know Breaking Bad? Maybe you watched it, maybe you didn't see Sopranos if you missed that or Deadwood. Mm. Same kind of show. Guy show, guy show, right? Remade the guy show. Um, there would be no reports about like how they looked or how much work they had done. Nobody would be like, Tony Soprano like looks like he got some facelifts. Nobody would be like that. They'd be like, he was gritty. Right? They would talk about the acting, the work. Like everything online is like how they look, which by the way, I think they look amazing. Let's be like, let's be realistic. Like they look great. They look great. And 
but like this whole thing about how they look and then the fighting between these two women and i'm just like wow Mm -hmm. like it is very rare you hear about a guy cat fight because nobody cares Hmm. right and i also just think like i think kim probably like fanned the fires because terry had made like a tweet uh, uh sarah jessica had made like a tweet yeah about um a relative of kim's that had passed and she was like we don't need your love and support that may have been like maybe more than the public needed to know I, I, <laughs> you could have maybe let that one go so out there for i'm me. just trying to keep them occupied while they're I, you're doing just endless drops me while you're going off it's I'm endless just... drops man i don't know what you want hit the subscribe button i'll talk to you about this nonsense all day <laughs> <laughs> Don't unsubscribe just because I'm chatty. You know you want to know this stuff, and I'm the best at teaching it. So come on, hang in. You're good. You can listen to me yammer for a second. So, yeah, no, it's been like a whole thing. That's been fascinating to me. And I'm just trying to imagine, like, they bring Breaking Bad back, and then they talk about how, like, I don't remember the actor's name. He played Hal and Malcolm in the Middle, and he played the guy in Breaking Bad. And Tell me his name in the comments if you remember. I don't remember. Right? Like, nobody's ever, like, He's gained a little weight. How's is he? Who wore it best? Like none of that, right? Mm-hmm. They wouldn't be like, I don't know. I feel like he's had a facelift. Nobody would be like that. It's just really bothering me. And nobody would care like if he was having a feud with anybody. They'd be like, it's a rival. That's first of all, they call it a rivalry. Mm-hmm. They would not call it a cat fight. <laughs> the rivalry. Respect for these people. Maybe I have been on Twitter too much over my my break. It's possible. Sometimes I get on Twitter and I'm like, what are these people talking about? Like, oh my gosh, are you a robot? I think some of these things are robots now, though. That's my new my new belief is that they are robots, not real accounts. And they have an algorithm to be divisive. To what purpose? I do not know. But I'm from 1980, so I always go back to Red Dawn. (laughs) That's always my conspiracy. (laughs) That or Skynet has come online. Yeah, there's always those kinds of problems. I really, really wish that they had not named that AI in China Skynet. It makes me very nervous. (laughs) The new Matrix is out, so it's like brought it back to my forefront. We're yeah. almost here, guys. So see how we're going? So this is the thing. You want to just make yourself comfortable during this time. If you need to mute me and just do these kinds of projects with me in the future, it's okay. <laughs> if you see a lot of repeat, you know I'm going to be yabby, yabby, yabby. Yabby, 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 yabby. How are you guys doing? Did you have a nice holiday? Are you having a nice time? How's the weather out there? All those questions. Are you good? Are you good? I hope you're good. hope you're okay. You will feel better after making a million zillion little drops, though, I can tell Mm -hmm. you that. Sometimes on these long ones, you can go on both sides because they have a tendency to have two sides of shadow. Yeah. Yeah. And that can be a good look on them to make them seem more great. See, it's like as soon as I put that second shot of shadow, that drip became like even more drippy. It did. That long run. Now, oh my gosh, if we had done a city scene where it was all blurry in the city scene and then this, that would have been like, boom, the move, the move, the move, the move. But, you know, we got to get you there in a second. We can't hit you with all the things at once. Right? That's why we do the beginner acrylic painting course. So you have a chance to like get in, get your toe in the water, figure out what you think of this medium. i switch over here a little bit. You're going to switch over there. Oh, up there now. I'm moving around. I'm sorry. That's okay. So, but you can see what I'm doing. I'm just doing these sort of little broken lines, right? Mm-hmm. We're good. Now, this is pretty good. Let's look at this. This looks pretty water droppy. It does. We could be super finished, and that would be reasonable. But we're gonna be, we're gonna be basic, but we're gonna be vanilla bean basic. Mm. A little hint of lavender. Uh-huh. A little hint. Man, you can add lavender to anything for me, and I'm like, I love it more. <laughs> That's true. Lavender. I want to eat flowers. We did not know that until a man. We got the was it two cows? What was that ice cream? Llama. Two llamas. Yeah. Llama llama. Llama llama. They were. It was so so good. Lavendery. Am I having another retreat in this area so I can go back and get ice cream? No, of course not. All right. 
So now I've got okay, my detail brush here, and I've got some of this fluid white acrylic. You could thin your white like you thinned your black if you don't have it. Uh -huh. Hold on. Let me get on there. I want to see it. And we're going to add some of these boom highlights. Boom. See. Right? Whole thing all over again. Right. Boy, you didn't know when you logged in today you'd be spending this much time with me. <laughs> I missed you so much. This was a weird first show of the year. <laughs> Oh yeah, it's like, this, well, I don't know that this is a. See, I got a. Oh, that's see, right, because there's going to be something before it. See, I, I made a mistake. See, right here yeah. on this, I mounted that uh, old school um, <laughs> pencil sharpener there, so it keeps popping up. I was frame. wondering, like, what that was there for. Well, Thank you I for. Wanted you to have a I have the I have the kitty. Oh, that's right. I'll move. I have the kitty the with the kitty eye. I love it so much. I'm just oh. adding some of these, and John will go. He'll get out of the way of that. So that's right. Because we've had the watercolor show, and we've had uh, the color mixing. Mm -hmm. So we had some stuff. But, you know, the first painting, painting of it. I designed it earlier, I guess is what I'm thinking. This is the first thing I designed for the new year. The first dress rehearsal. Well, no, like, because I, I was, like, I was doing, like, painting riffs. I was, like, riffing in my painting. Mm. I'm, like, you know, riffing in my painting. <laughs> Being like super hardcore original, no references anybody can like overtly use. Mm. <laughs> That's why you can't do like Pixabay's like amazing. The problem is, is like you know, then it's in a Creative Commons, so your painting is in Creative Commons. Doesn't really matter most of the time. Mm. Doesn't it? Doesn't, but sometimes it matters. And what I do, it would matter, not what you would do. I like it for for a thing. This is just from this is from my mind. What I don't know if that's good or bad. I think it's good. Look at that! Now those are popping, pop, 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 like huh. popping rocks, pop rocks. These are my pop rocks, little drops. You can do it, cause you rock. Yeah. You know it. I see it. You know it. So, like, do you ever, like, look back at your childhood and, like, have that, like, moment where you realize, like, there but for the grace of God go I? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sitting in bed and I'm watching something about, like, this, this, like, mountain lion. And I was like, you know, I was fair, like many people in the 80s, I was fairly unattended in the afternoons. <laughs> unsupervised, largely unsupervised since 1985. Lar um, anyways, I was unsupervised in the afternoon. And um, I would run around in like the background country area of undeveloped Southern California back when Southern California had areas that were un undeveloped. That, was a, that used to be a thing. It's not a thing now, but it used to be a thing. There were orange groves. Anyways, um... So I go around there and I realized I was like a small kid uh -huh. with like no dog or stick or anything. Just run. I could have been it at by a mountain lion. Like, and then I couldn't go to sleep because I thought about it. And then I thought, what if I was in a multiverse? So in one of those realities, I was at by a mountain lion. Man, I could not go to sleep. That is why you don't talk to John about like science before bed. <laughs> Just a little advice there for you. Like, don't ask him questions about science before bed if you want to sleep. And I mean, I'm like, just like, could I feel that in the multiverse? Like, how bad was it? <laughs> just like, man. Existential crisis. It was deep. It was a deep existential crisis. And you don't want to talk to your doctor or your psychiatrist about it because it's magical thinking. Except it's not scientific thinking. Magical thinking is like my big friend in the sky that I talk to all the time. That's mad. I like it though, and I'm not changing it. That being said, oh, so drops keeping you with me. You're with me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
man, I ran around some like back country places, like up ravines, Escondido Creek, mm-hmm. all the way up Escondido Creek, bouldering. What could have gone wrong? Dude, and nobody knew where I was either. <laughs> like, or what I had been wearing that day. Like, I'm like, you got to know the answers to those questions. What were they wearing that day? I, nobody would have known how to answer that for me. Mm-hmm. My parents would have been like, I don't know, some clothes? Probably. <laughs> Probably. We hope. <laughs> and she left the house dressed in more than cowgirl boots. Not real sure. <laughs> Come to think of it. <laughs> <laughs> I like how this is the the, the 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 highlight makes this really really look like there's rain on the window. Rain on the window. Oh, look at this! Is this not just the mwah, 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 mwah. kiss like at your it. painting? Go mwah, mwah, mwah. <laughs> mwah. We did it! We did it! We did this new painting, and it was awesome. And you did it with me. If you are here in the video still, you are a champion, mm-hmm. champion of art. Oh my gosh. And it looks so good, doesn't it? It really does. It does, man. You put this on a frame hanging on the wall, people are going to be like, whoa, man, that's incredible. How'd you do it? Don't answer. Don't answer. Let them wonder. Let them wonder. Like, I'm just so talented. Mm-hmm. I understand the way light refracts through water. And I was able to express it to you so you could feel it in your soul. So I'm giving you an answer. <laughs> I'm going to take this brush, and I'm going to sign this painting. I'm going to sign it in black, I think. Very delicately. This was fun. I hope you guys had fun. I had fun. I really did. Okay. Now. When we come back, we're going to tell you all about what's next. And I'm going to try to get a couple more questions uh, from the show, like to make sure I get those answered. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like to make sure we stay in touch, that we're together. You feel me? So um, don't go anywhere. Because if you had a question and I missed it, I might catch it at the end. Is that, I don't know. I like winking at them like that's exciting. Maybe that's not exciting to <laughs> you. If it is exciting to you, you should stay for the transition. You know what's interesting <laughs> what? is that you always should transition mm-hmm. like two sentences before. I do? You do. No. Like, oh, my goodness. My, my, my like, exits out of, like, parties and painting and it these videos. a hook. Well, they're awkward for sure. <laughs> You're awkward for sure. Like the dinner party's gone great. And then, you know, you got to say that like weird thing. Like, I can't really like the smell of sturgeon. <laughs> what? <are> like, what? Because <laughs> there was no fish at the dinner. <laughs> got to leave people wondering what happened. You know what did happen today? You and me, we made a painting. And you are amazing. Okay. Transition? Transition. Hey, that was so much fun. But now is the new my new favorite segment of this uh, kind of new thing that we're doing. We're going to test this out. We've been collecting uh, questions uh, for me during the show. Mm-hmm. John and the team has been questioning so I could be focused on teaching. Try and um, I'm going to go through and answer the last few that my chat queued up. And then I'm going to go to that document. And, and so instead of me doing that thing where I'm really distracted during the lesson, <laughs> answering questions i'm kind of saving it up and then i'm going to go through those and i think that that might be the theory is this is more useful for you so the first one is brenda alvey asks should you outline with black down both sides of the raindrops and on this i want to say not solidly on both sides but a little bit on both sides if you really just are ever stuck in your car when it's raining you'll notice that there is a dark band down most of the long side of raindrops so i find like it's nice to add a little bit but not so heavy that it becomes like cartoonish um a lot of uh a lot of compliments today on my hair (laughs) i was told that so thank you i'm so glad that i looked nice today um maggie h was saying like first time uh turned in about three four years ago the thought i was out there john Mm -hmm. but then decided no 
She's kind of super okay. There was a really important question um, about Cad Red that Lisa D asked. Can you just add white to Cad Red to make it Cad Red Light or Cad Red Medium? Um, neither. Actually, probably yellow is a better color to add to Cad Red. If you had a, uh, it would be very unusual to not have a uh, Cad Red Medium at least. You could get a Cad Red Deep and that would be like a little biased blue. Um, if you added zinc white to it, it wouldn't be cad red light or medium. It would be a lightened cad red deep because they're actually almost three separate hues. One is very blue biased, one is middle orange, and one is quite orange. So um, well, if you're working in the middle and trying to go cad red light, you could add cad yellow to it. But it makes sense why you might think just add white, right? Uh -huh. I'm going through, going through. Uh, Kim Zook asked the all important question Are there any watercolor classes next week? Yes. Definitively, yes. We're quiet. So, if, if, if you uh, want to learn how to do watercolor, we're doing that over on a different channel, the watercolor channel. And it's a weirdly quiet channel. And uh, we just do stuff every week, just every week. And we're going to keep doing it. Do stuff. Do stuff. Uh, Karen GP, what's the Sherpa's call on photos? Are they okay for Fine Art Friday or not? So if you are painting with me and regularly sharing tutorials and you have an original photo that you would like to share as your original art, um, I think that's okay with me. I'll let um, the moderators know that that would be okay with me. Um, uh, remember not to give permission to paint other people's photography. We definitely, we had this big, uh, interesting kind of copyright debate in group about Hobbiton in New Zealand because they do photo tours mm -hmm. and who owns the copyright to those images because the place gives limited use rights to the people who take the photos. Right. So that was a very interesting thing. So, but just generally your original photos. Uh, Deanna CM says, okay, how did she get the reference painting before she did it? So if you're in my patronage, you want to watch for this if you're in the patron group because what you'll see is I'll share with you digital sketches and I'll be like, hey, I had an idea. Does this seem silly? And then um, you'll see some studies come through, uh, sometimes two, sometimes three, and those can become original paintings here. Mm -hmm. um, and like I talked about with the references, they're getting weirder. So probably more of this this year of me just working out original stuff because I just don't feel like messing with anybody. Um, I just don't like messy boots. <laughs> <laughs> is what it is so that's how i am all right did it did it did it i'm gonna make sure i'm not missing anything make sure maggie h said i ended up not painting long i was working on a different painting but i stayed the whole time because it was fun to watch and listen i hope it was fun to watch and listen i i hope today was fun i hope today was a good idea um the w we're trying to organize it into more thoughtful stuff now i'm going to go into the save questions da -da -da -da, show questions and kind of get into that. Then there's a grip. All right. Now, we had a lot of reference photo questions, John. Yes. Next time, I'm going to embed them in the video. I just yeah. didn't this time for strategic sheep purposes. But we're going to change the sheep purposes um, and all of that. Uh, how do I keep the canvas from showing through I've primed it so if you're talking about the bumps this was asked by Betty Graham how do you keep a canvas from showing through and I primed it I'm thinking you're thinking about the bumps and what you just want is a smoother canvas and I would switch to an ampersand which is a very smooth service uh, CN Hale says I love traceables and I love giving you guys traceables I think I'm gonna try to work on coloring pages from this year's paintings I don't know fingers crossed um, Deanna CM, does anyone know my Liquitex is chunkish? Does that mean it's gone bad It's or it's not smooth? Yeah, it does. If it looks like cottage cheese, it has gone off um, and you should uh, return it. Uh, they will give you a whole bunch of like 75 tricks to reincorporate it. That is not your job. And they'll try to tell you it's separation, which it's not. And it Separation is where you see clear liquid and pigment, but they're both smooth. When it looks like cottage cheese, the paint is off. Now, if... As a consumer, they tell you that's what it's supposed to be. You can choose to buy a different product. That's right. Seriously, you can and should. But generally, if you send in pictures, sometimes you got to be like CSIing it. But if you send in pictures, that generally replace the paint. 
Tammy wants to know uh, how my mom is and John is, and that's because there was a picture. Of, boy, man, it's been a thing. Like my mom got attacked by a toilet on a cruise ship. The thing exploded underneath her and fully injured her. Not like like an explosion, like with, with like explosives, but the whole thing just came apart like it was in an anime universe. Um, I don't know how she peed the rest of the trip. So she had that happen, and then John Little had some stuff happen, and they're both completely okay. Um, oh, generally, if my mom's posting, she's all right. That's what I've kind of learned. If my mom can post, she's all right. Uh, it's when she goes, like, silent that I start to get, like, the radar up. Um, uh, Gina says, I just found you both and say I absolutely love your channel. Thank you for all you do. Um, and how can I send you something as a thank you? Well, on YouTube, there's a thing called Super Chat, which is a one-time donation. On Facebook, there's a thing called Stars, which is a one-time donation. You guys just set that. It could be anything from, like, a dollar, I think, a dollar up to whatever you say. Um, we also have a one-time donation on our store on our website. That's like that's a gratuity. Yeah, if you're gonna do one time, that's best. Yeah, that's a good one. You know, and then we have recurring like our patronage and our emoji club. All right. Uh, so if you go to theartsherpa.com forward slash patron, then you can find out all the info on that stuff. So we generally do a very bad job of promoting ourselves and our stuff. But it is our patrons who help make uh, it, all of this possible. So thank you guys. And it's a huge, valuable part of what we do. Thank you. A big question came up again. Is this pre-recorded? Partially. What is the sorcery for the hairdryer? So I had a series of meetings with John at the, at the end of the year while I was taking that break. And really just said, um, what is it people want? What do they need? And I'm like, I, there's actually a fun thing. The team is mocking me. Um, oh, Nikki Martin, chat member, Emoji Club for 10 months. All right, so I was like, fact. Everybody needs the traceable. Fact. <laughs> they want these questions <laughs> answered. Fact. The or information. So I was just going down this bullet point list, and we realized we need to organize some of this in a very particular focused way. And Cinnamon has a lot of facts. I have a lot of facts that I believe that you guys need. <laughs> and then um, we need to have it be live so that I can be agile and answer your questions that come out um, during the show. So um, this is kind of the what we're doing, and yeah. you'll have to let me know if you like it because I, I need I need to be in a conversation with you in real time. Like I want to be able to say hi and see who's here, as you know. And then uh, John's always here in chat. And then also um, I want to be like able to answer questions at the end of the show like this in a much more personal way. So that's kind of what we're maybe doing. Uh, so that's why we're like oh. Thank you so much, Trisha Woods. How are you doing? Um, I hope the family's doing really well. Uh, you know, uh, just let, feedback. I promise you can give feedback. I'll protect you. You can tell me what you think. I watch my comments. Uh, I'll, I'm happy to hear feedback. Mackie, Usable, actionable feedback. Reach out to support at theartsherpa.com, and they can help you for that kind of stuff. Dory Robinson asked a good question. What is Pantone? So if you want to know more about Pantone, come tomorrow. And we're going to do the colors of the, we're going to do the color of the year, which is Perry. And I'm going to maybe do some more of the colors that they put in their colors of the year. They're, it's, they're, they're a company that determines, uh, they, they created a coding system for color for designers and fashion people. And they unified it, made it a catalog. And now apparently they're in charge of it. Yeah, artists have feelings on it. They're definitely not the art police, but they may be the color constables. <laughs> the constables of color. <laughs> uh, Brad, Brad wanted to know, is the brush wet or damp when I blend? It's damp, not wet. Wet will ruin the blend. Um, and a lot of questions about the brushes that I'm using. Uh, and then we also noticed that the number four is not available for sale anywhere anymore. So that may be gone. That may Maybe be sold, sold out. out. Um, so here's the brushes from today's uh, class, right? This is the uh, Raphael uh, Hog, and these are the blenders that I use. These are the Ultimate Varnish Brush. I've got some black pearls here, some ruby satins, and this is the number four round. You'll notice we're starting to break the brushes down by the type of brush it is, filbert, bright, round. Then uh, the type of uh, filament it is. Is it uh, hog hair, or is it natural hair, or is it synthetic? And then um, the firmness of that, is it soft or is it firm? And then the length of the handle. And that is because there are so many brands of brushes out there. And we don't want to be so brand specific until we have our next brushes ready. So I'm going to teach you just how to buy a brush. Remember, teach a man to fish. I'm going to teach you to fish. 
is what I'm doing. <laughs> Teaching you to fish on the brushes. And so um, there's a code on how to read that. And that way you'll be like, if I say it's an inch, uh, you know, or medium, right? So that's about a half inch to an inch in width is a medium brush. And you would measure from here to here to get that. If I was to say, you know, on, on a brush that was around, it's the diameter of the brush that you would kind of eye it on. And it's a way to eyeball it so that you kind of go, oh, that's an extra small. An extra small would be something in this range, right? So we're just trying to help you find brushes because a lot of people make an angle that will work, right? Quarter inch angle that will work. So you've got to just understand what I'm picking and why. I will always share with you, sorry, the thing with the brush is a little crazy right now. And Lynn's like, thank you for the patience, John. Great camera work, good attitude. Uh, what would give the closest uh, effect to hog brushes in the synthetic? I am cruelty free. Catalyst brushes by Princeton. Leslie K. Catalyst brushes by Princeton really are like a hog. They're super rough. They're super stiff. And I feel like they're scruffy, scruffy, scruffy um, like a hog. So you'll see more of those and on here. Just in the paradigm of like humanity, no animals in our modern society are harvested for brush hairs because there's not enough demand for it. Yeah, they're it's a they're byproduct. byproduct. It's yeah, it's a so it's a but byproduct. But you may not want to support that industry at right. all. Like the watercolor brushes I recommend are actually synthetic squirrel now. They're no they're squirrels. Robot squirrels. They're robot squirrels. So, um, and my brush line will likely be synthetic. Um, generally, at that I will probably go that way unless I find out somehow that it's ruining the world in another direction that Those I didn't expect. Those robot squirrels. They feel like they're real. They don't like being called synthetic. Now, you guys, again, had a bunch of questions about where is the reference photo, which there isn't. This is original design. However, the painting is on the website, and you can use that as a reference. Does that make sense? Yes. Next time, I'll include reference. it in picture. In picture. Um, what, when artists refer to study pieces, what exactly do they mean? That means uh, practicing. <laughs> so <laughs> what will happen is you'll have kind of an idea, and you know you want to do a thing, but you're not really sure what thing you want to do. And so you paint it out exploring and fleshing out that idea, but it's not your resolve finished piece. This got painted a couple times. It took me a minute to figure out the size of the cabin to the tree. This nonsense <laughs> just right. had me crazy. <laughs> you may be like, you know, it'd be a good idea. Uh, some <laughs> flowers in the field in front of that. Uh, yeah. And then you're like, nope, didn't work. Got to make it something else. All right. And Salik Khan, which hopefully uh, you stayed. Do we need branded paints for great results? I'm a beginner and I just fish and finished watching two of your videos. Fortunately, uh, uh, you're live and I must say you're amazing. Thank you, first of all. So I want to say brands. Quality paint doesn't necessarily have to be a brand, but it does have to perform a certain way. And it doesn't have to be like expensive. You want something with a good binder and a lot of pigment and not transparent and uh, somebody with a customer service line. And, and there's hundreds of paint companies around the world. I, I would, I'd like to throw this in. So I'm not a painter, but I've watched a lot of new painters come along. And the only time and the only reason I would suggest you consider brand paints is at that very beginning time because it removes the question mark of is this the paint? the problem or am I the problem? And sometimes when you start out with those quality products, then you know you're learning and not but fighting the problem. That doesn't necessarily mean it has to be expensive. And I have, have a to. list, a blog on the website that lists every acrylic paint and what I've tried. That's why those are recommended. Small I'm testing quantities. in brand new line right now. Yeah, try smaller quantities. Yeah. That's a good way of starting. You know, look, look for, for sales. Sales. Um, but it, it really is um, beginning in art. Sometimes I think it's easier for students to use better quality products because then they don't question whether or not they're making the right mark or if it, the pencil's just not making it. Yeah, it, it's one of those, it's tough because again, uh, one of the number one thing when I counsel young artists, right, about their portfolios for college or what they need to do next, usually my first advice is your talent has now exceeded your materials. I see that on TikTok. I'd say that there's a number one problem with the art on TikTok. Stop the drawing talent, on lined paper. 
has exceeded the materials, guys. You're just much better artists than this. I don't know. Get somebody to donate stuff to you. You deserve it. You're so good. Copy papers only get you so far. <laughs> That's right. It's not the right weight. doesn't have a good tooth. Can I highlight on the drops be done with zinc white? Ask Cappy. Yes. Um, and then uh, Sully's like, what student paints? I like, what are student paints? Those are ones that are more economy. So they, they, ca they cut the cost somehow. Sometimes they cut the cost in quality. Sometimes uh, they this just is, yeah, don't This is going to be a personal pigment. experience. I mean, like Karen found it much easier to work with, you know, um, other kinds of paints. And that's a real personal experience. But generally, what the reason why we suggest those is that you find a shared experience with people to say, hey, I bought X paint and it did what X paint's supposed to do, but I got this other thing. And they're like, oh, use a different brush. Um... We had some uh, equipment uh, questions, uh, which we don't give equipment advice, but I highly recommend. Um, uh, Go to YouTube school. Yeah, line of like tech tips and stuff like that. That's because that stuff changes every day. Like last week, it could be Manfrotto is the best, but who knows who is good uh, now? And, and yeah, we you know, don't we don't teach YouTube. We teach art. Right, but I I'm I'm he, like that is my advice, at, not as a teacher of YouTube, but as just somebody on here is like. Uh, go to the tech guys if you need equipment advice because they're the ones that give the best. If like I'm the good art advice, they're the good tech advice. And um, that was that was a question. Um, Karen wants to know if I'm gonna be able to make my own brush line soon. Yeah, actually, I'm getting a lot closer on that, and also I'm getting a lot closer on being able to curate brushes that I personally approve that you will have access to through my website. And and there's there's like paint conversations and. Like all sorts of neat things. Um. Uh. So Dee's just saying that hey, when I use acrylic black paint, it when you water it down, it stays dark, but then it dries light. That's the color shift in that, and that just means there's not enough pigment to do coating. All righty, da da da. I think John. Um. I I uh I think we did it. I think we're there. So this is the new, new, um, and uh, hopefully the mini books will actually start coming out before the paintings. Mm. I don't know. We'll see how that goes. I it have was... to get new spare parts. We gotta get new. I got. I got. <laughs> so I bought this <laughs> really stuff. awesome machine, and it has a broken spring. <laughs> One little tiny broken spring. Yeah. It's sorry, the tech took us out. T tomorrow we're gonna mix colors. I'm gonna be doing more tips. So watch for tips. I really enjoy tips. Um, if you haven't followed my TikTok and you are on TikTok, don't get talk TikTok if you don't have TikTok and you it's don't want TikTok. Don't get it. But if you're there anyways. It's a social media hole. It is. And it may be bad with your data. That said, <laughs> if you're there anyways, if they've already got your data and your profile and you're hanging out there, um, I'm doing more tips over there. Um, we've got a Discord uh, group that you can come do. New tip for Discord because my kid just got hacked. Um, the new rule is if it's don't open a link, like, unless it's like a YouTube, don't open a link that says, come look at my game don't or come look at anybody. Mm -mm. Don't download anything from you. Even if anyone. it's from me. Yeah. That's a good thing. Never download a file from somebody else on the internet and, and execute it. Yeah. It's just very good practice. Just we don't, will, don't yeah. like, and I know sometimes if it comes from me, that was like how some hackers worked in 2020 is they were using my identity to get people's credit card information because people trusted me. Yeah. Um, that was really horrible <laughs> because they're like, oh, well, if Cinnamon wants it, I suppose it's okay. It was not okay. They were liars. So uh, that, but we're on Discord and I like it over there. Um, we got a TikTok. What else have we got going on? Uh, a lot of talking. So much talking and more tips. Check out the tips. Tips. And I've got the watercolor channel. I do watercolor lessons. They're just not on this channel. So go over to the watercolor channel and hit that subscribe button and learn how to do watercolor with me. Because we're, we, we're, we're not going to say what she painted because, you know, there's always that demonetization monster floating out there. But I'll <laughs> have to bird. say. It's a bird. It's a bird. But it's, the bird has a dirty name. <laughs> so <laughs> I didn't name it. I don't feel responsible. More of that to come. Um, if you want to see what's upcoming, check the calendar. No, sometimes we have to move things for family. Um, you know, we've, uh, as you guys know, doctors get to set appointments. So sometimes I have to move events just to juggle that. But in general, we'll be here. Um, if you have feedback, 
look, you guys, the the whole art, it's like makeup in the early days and now art is exploding. And I got to bring you the best lessons I can to earn your time and your viewership. So definitely give me feedback below about what you like, what you don't like, what's good. And I may not be able to take your advice, but if I can, I probably will, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And everyone's like, don't click links. Don't click links. Don't like things. <laughs> don't click links. Don't All right. Them. Yeah. And you can, you know, like in this chat, our mods will give you links and it's okay to click those links. Those the okay. wrenches are going to be pretty. YouTube has much better protections mm -hmm. but in their code than in general, Discord. Like don't download an application. If it says, in, I'm going to install something. Go, wait. Yeah. I no. mean, <laughs> no. well, like usually it's a collaboration. Like I made a game or I made a thing and I just want you to check it out and give me your opinion. What is the Discord link? Jenna asks. You know, I don't know. It's a little changing thing that happens all the time. I'll have to go find it. We'll put it for, in the link. For my child, what happened, for my child, what happened was uh, they um, had a friend get hacked and that friend's account sent them a um, request to check out a video game their friend had worked on. And when they went to check it out, it, it stole their Discord account. And then the thieves did two-factor authentication Mm -hmm. and um, took their accounts like so we couldn't get it back. You didn't hear the funny follow-up on this. If you were following this, here's the funny follow-up. Uh, my child's uh, partner, they've been dating forever, um, actually has some tech skills and found the hacker. And then all the friends wrote the hacker and said, we know where you are and scared this criminal a little bit to death. And I don't feel that bad about it. Um, <laughs> to be really honest, I was like, can I scare a hacker? I'm like, yeah, I guess you can. You're welcome to scare the hacker. I don't mind. I kind of want to do it too. Like if I was like a dangerous person, I would absolutely do it. Um, Eva says, thank you for sharing your art knowledge. What wet palette do you use? Okay. So I use the Stay Wet Masterson palette and I use their uh, prescribed sheets of paper and it's got the sponge and all of that in here. Um, I like the one that's got the nine by 12 opening and then this here. And I think it's like... 15 by 15 it's like a square and then that's how they're able to do this um so it's like or it's so if it's 9 by 12 it's 12 by 12 is what it is it's a 12 by 12 and then they make this here and i like that because stick a brush there so it, they actually used it for paint that you're supposed to have in the side but i'm never going to use paint plots and i like it and so that's what i use that's what i prefer some people put a penny in it to prevent mold i have no idea if that works i haven't had any mold problems um at all but if you did maybe the penny would work mm -hmm. or anti-mold agents i'm not really sure i always worry about what it's going to do to my paint okay let me know what tips you want let me know what you want to paint let me know what you want to do um see you tomorrow for how to mix pantone's color of the year perry it's going to be real fun and super simple you're going to love it and then you'll be able to like you know be like my paintings use color of the year from pantone 2022 it's so lovely <laughs> Be good to yourselves, be good to each other, and I want to see you at an easel really soon. Bye-bye!